uh, this rabbit hole that we're going down, uh, there's either going to have to be a side shoot that we can get out of this or it's going to be real bad because you're going to get a lot of people cornered. Oops. And there's just so many reasons why you need to be prepped and ready. It, 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 the writing is on the wall. I keep talking about this stuff and everything else, but it's so very important for everybody out there to understand in this community and anybody that's watching how important it is for you to start doing whatever you can do. I mean, you, you have to, you have to take the bull by the horns. I try to give you information. I try to help people out. I try to make sure that I'm, I'm covering stuff and, and I try to do my part in this community to make sure that you're always aware of what's going on. I mean, I know some of you, sometimes you may, you may think it's all, oh, you, you know, you sound like a broken record. Yes, but I'm trying to drill it into people's head how very important this is. Uh, Joe Biden there was talking about, you know, now they want to start taking the sanctions and stuff away from certain countries. And we're going to discuss Venezuela. Now you want to do this. You want to take these sanctions and everything away because for one, they want to buy all the oil. That's what they want. All right. So whatever the U S wants something from another country, they'll do whatever they have to do. Right. And why you're going to take sanctions away and buy oil from a country that really doesn't really particularly care for us, but they'll take our money all day long because it's going to turn around and it's going to fund them and their government and it's going to fund their military. And we all know that these places are probably so corrupt. There are so many corrupt leaders and everything else that's in there. They're going to use that money to funnel to the wrong group of people. If you get what I'm saying. Right. Why is the government going down that rabbit hole? Right. We can do everything we can right here. We don't need to be doing stuff and buying stuff from everybody else. This All, all this BS has to stop and it has to stop really soon, folks. And it's going to turn around and bite us in the, the rear end, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because Who's making this call? And the next question I have when we're talking about gas and diesel prices and stuff, okay? Gas prices as of today was, uh, what is it? It's national average is $4.50, all right, a gallon. Diesel is $5.60 a gallon, national average. Now everybody has different, you know, that's just an average all across the board, all right? These, a lot of these top executives and a lot of these people that analyze all this stuff, what they're telling us is, is if things don't change and we don't find that shoot in this rabbit hole, okay, folks, by August, they're talking $6 plus a gallon of gas. That means diesel will be between seven and eight bucks. If that happens, the trucks will be parked. They're not going to be able to afford it. And who is holding all these big oil companies accountable? If you people just go on and Google how much money these people are making, it will blow your mind. Billions and billions of dollars in just this year. They've already hit record profits because they're so quick to raise the price when oil goes up two pennies on the stock market and it goes up 20 cents at the pump. But when the stock market on the oil and it drops, say, four bucks, the price never goes down. Now, does it? This is what I'm saying, folks. We're going down this rabbit hole, and this rabbit hole is, is ugly. All right? Another thing that we have to be worried about. We got, what, viruses after viruses after viruses. It seems like it's all of a sudden just popping up all over the place. You know? I mean, what? We got, we got the, the monkey flu now. We got uh, Charlie Victor 19 and its little offsprings are springing up all over the place. We got the bird flu that's still going on, but you don't hear anything about it. But if you go online and research it, <laughs> it's still happening. You know, we're up to like 36 million birds just in the United States that have been called off. And the, the funny thing, all these different viruses, pandemics, whatever you want to call them. Okay. Somebody please explain to me, how is it? Everything seems to start in New York City. Has anybody else noticed this? It's like, you know, boom, New York City has it. Boom, New York City has it. 
boom, they got the monkey flu. Boom, they got this. You know? Doesn't one just want to sit back and scratch their head and say, hmm, something seems a little funny here, folks, because it seems to start there all the time. And I don't want to hear that they get the most overseas travelers because that report just came out on Friday for here in Florida that Governor Ron DeSantis announced that we hit 45% of the overseas travelers that are coming to America are coming to Florida. That's 45%. It was a record. We've never hit that before. That's a lot. So, I mean, one just has to think if there's something else going on somewhere, people have to question things, you know, but no, you can't get a straight answer from nobody or anywhere. Not anymore, you know. Then this past week, I'm sure you've all noticed, or maybe you even took a hit, you know, the stock market. Holy cow, did it just like, whoo, right down the tubes. On Friday, the S&P was actually in a bear market for quite a while, and it was slowly climbed out of the bear market range, which is 20% in a year. It's dropped. If it goes down below that, it's in a bear market. And it climbed just above the 20% range, just before the closing it's bell. I'm sure maybe some of you might have heard because it was on some of the national news stations for once. Uh, the baby formula crisis. Yes, the president said that, uh, you know, he invoked his uh, disaster um, alert there so that he could, you know, start making more baby formula so they can get this other plan up and running and everything else. They brought in their first plane load, which was supposed to land today. I don't know how they're going to decide who gets what, but, you know, that came from overseas. There's supposed to be more coming from overseas. So for once, maybe we're getting something, but I would like to know how much we paid them for it. I'm sure they just didn't give it to us. Like, you know, we have an open checkbook, you know, um, we're up to $54 billion right now for the war that's going on across the water there. And, um, but $54 billion, I can guarantee you that there's more pork in that bill than there is what is actually necessary. I can guarantee it because that's just how our government runs. doesn't matter which party. Everybody always has something they want to put into a bill if there's something they want passed. You, you know, know, I mean, why did they wait so long with the baby formula to get to a, a boiling point where these mothers are just, you know, I mean, they're going from um, store to store to store. I've watched so many different videos and stuff from different news agencies throughout the whole country and how women are, they're going to 20, 30 stores a day just to try to find a formula for their baby. This is ridiculous. I mean, come on, folks. You know, we live in, this is United States of America. We shouldn't be doing this, but we are. And see, that's the whole thing. People need to realize that this isn't 30, 40 years ago. Things have changed. There's never going back to a normal pre-Charlie Victor 19. It ain't going to happen. It's not part of the plan. There's a bigger plan that's already being played out. And they're slowly irking away from everything. And it saddens me to say that. But it's the truth. And you need to hear the truth. You need to be aware of what's going on. You can go right to the WHO website. You can read it for yourself. What they, what they want to do. What they have planned. I've done videos with Bill Gates and all his, you know, lab-grown meats that he wants to do. It's out there, folks. I mean, hello. Wake up. Smell the roses. Easy. You know, the food prices are rising so high and so fast. I mean, for one, the grocery stores can't keep up with changing. For two, people can't afford basic necessities anymore. For three, it's all part of the smoke and mirrors. And the sad part about what is taking place with the economy, food prices, 
interest rates going up, and all these different things, is we're going to be putting more and more Americans below the poverty level, and more and more people are receiving eviction notices, being booted out of their homes, and they have jobs, they just can't afford it. Interest rates on everything, everything has gone up. What is a mortgage now? 5%? Something like that. You know, I mean, you got interest rates on your credit cards, your cars, your homes, whatever you may be. The interest rates are all going up, which means it's costing you more money for all those objects. You know, China is uh, China's still in the lockdown. And this is what's going to come back and bite us later on down the road. The simple fact is we just can't make it here. So until they get their situation straight over there, which doesn't really seem like it's happening too fast. And I think it's all a ploy. I think it's all being done intentionally. I could be wrong. If you agree, that's fine. But you know what, folks? Something doesn't uh, so something doesn't sit well with me with that whole situation. We're going to lock down the whole country. Nobody can leave their homes or nothing. We'll bring you food. But you can't go anywhere. And some of those people have been like that for, what, 60 days now? Just imagine that, folks. People don't want to believe what they're seeing they better want to believe what they're hearing or anything else until it's too late and the party's over and then it's not going to be a beautiful day in a neighborhood anymore so on one last note if everybody out here that is listening to this right now and watching me all right if you're sick and tired of the way this country is being run is the way that we're going down this rabbit hole and how the, it's destroying this whole country. Everybody out there, because we can't, nobody can see, I can't see you clap, but everybody out there, give me a number one. If you're tired of everything that's going on out there, voice your opinion right now and put a number one in the comments. Because you know what, folks? It, it's, sickening, it's sickening, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine all these people out here that are, struggling day by day, week by week. And it's horrible, isn't it? What is taking place to this country? We have to get this country back. We have to get back to some type of a normal, daily, civil union as far as how we look and treat other people that are living in this country legally, Americans. Everybody out there, your, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, everybody out there, at some point in time, they had something to do with building this country. Rather, if they were farmers, if they were steel workers, if they were coal miners, if they laid asphalt to build the roads, if they worked on the railroads, building the railroads and everything else, they had something to do with making this country great. And that's what we got to get back to. We have to get back to the fact that, you know what, folks? Sometimes things are really bad. Yes. And we're going to go through some really nasty stuff coming up, folks, because I'm telling you, this, this whole system cannot keep riding on this line this rabbit hole that we just went down i hope to god that somebody's digging a shoot down the other side so we can get the hell out because if not it, it's going to get ugly and it's going to get ugly really really fast so what can we do we can try to be prepared as much as possible but it still can be done it just can't be done at the magnitude that we 
are so used to prepping for a lot of new preppers and everything else that are out here. I'm getting uh, emails from people now and they're, they're asking me, what do they do? You know, they, they don't have a lot of money. They they're, they're struggling. You know, I understand a lot of people are out there struggling. I've got, like I said, I've been getting emails and, and people are saying, you know, they're, they're having a hard time, you know, but they, they know they, they, they need to keep prepping. They, they need to do more, you know, and I try to explain to them, you know, just try to, if, if there's some way that you can cut back on anything that's not really a necessity. And that's very hard for Americans to do. Very hard. All right. We're so used to being able to do whatever we want, have whatever we want and all this kind of stuff. And when you got to start cutting back and there's those interest rates and everything start going up and the stock market gets going south and the housing market's going to go south and everything's going to go south. you got to try to keep an even kill. You know, you got to keep a roof over your head. You got to keep food on the table. And you got to keep the power on, right? I mean, those are your necessities. But is it a necessity to go out to eat two or three times a week? You know, um, I said something to one guy. I told him, I said, you know, because he says, you know, he buys lunch every day. I said, start packing your lunch. You know, I, I take my lunch every day. I don't buy lunch. It, it cost me a fortune. I pack my lunch, take my lunch with me, take all my drinks with me and everything else. I got a big old cooler, fits right in the back of my truck. Boom, now there you go. I'm good to go. I'm just saying there's there's I'm not trying to tell people that you you can't have any type of fun or you you know any of this type of stuff. But I bet you everybody if you sit back and you really looked at your finances and everything else and I'm no financial advisor whatsoever, but a lot of it's common sense folks. And it was taught to us in school when I went to school. You know, they don't teach us kind of stuff nowadays. But if you sit back and you look at your finances and you write them all down and you see what you're spending, I bet you you can pick out one or two things that's not really a necessity. And you can save money on that. And then maybe you could take that and put it into towards your preps and stuff. There's always ways around doing these type of things, folks. And prepping is the biggest one. You just got to make sure you're staying on top of your game. If you catch good sales, try to hit them up. Like I've said in several different videos, download. Most people nowadays have, you know, these lovely smartphones, you know, the way they track us and everything else. All right. But they do come in handy for a lot of different things. All right. You can download all your local grocery stores that will probably have your major grocery store chains will have apps. Download the apps. You can go in there. You might get at like extra points. Um, you can see the flyers. You can see what's on sale, the buy one, get ones. You can find all this information out. And some of the apps, you can also see the next week that's coming. You can see what's going to be coming out on sale. And then, you know, hit up some of these coupon sites. I did a video not too long ago, and I give you a whole bunch of coupon sites. You can go in, and you can get coupons and everything else. There's ways. It takes time, yes. It takes a good budget because you have to be able to plan out either your meals or what you want to buy and what you're going to do with it. Are you going to put some in it for your preps? Or is this just for your weekly shopping? You know, you can figure out how much money you're saving, especially with your buy one, get ones, this type of stuff. Then turn around and spend a little extra money and pick up a few extra cans of canned goods, uh, dry goods, beans, rice, whatever the case may be. And this way here, you're building your stock as you're saving money. Because in this time... You know, I mean, with, with just all that's going on right now, it is a, it, it, this rabbit hole is, it's getting pretty deep, folks. And we're almost getting down, pushed down towards the end. And when we hit the end, I got a feeling it's going to be a, a, a nasty situation that we're going to be in. And uh, I pray to God I'm wrong. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope you all can come back and say, you know what? You were wrong. And I'm going to be like, thank God. Because I'm not looking forward to it either. But I'm telling you, folks, as of right now, things don't look too bright. 
And that's why I'm on here trying to make sure everybody out here understands the importance of what is taking place and keeping you informed and trying to help you out any way I can to get you any type of preps. That's my goal. As I've said before, that's the whole reason I started this channel. And I'll state that until I'm blue in the face. And I don't, it doesn't really matter to me if people like it or not. That's who I am. And I care about people. I care about this community. We are building a great community here. There's a lot of great people here. And that's what's important. It's very important for everybody to try to stay focused. That's my job. I'm like the team leader. My job is to keep you all focused, to keep you going, to keep you motivated in the right direction so that you and your family will be safe if we hit the dead end in this rabbit hole.